A lot of people seem confused about whether or not the idea of circularity or a style referencing itself would be a roadblock to implementing something like element queries or container queries in CSS. And so if the question is, does the idea of a container query or an element query have a problem with circularity, the answer is a firm no. Now I can explain why, and we'll go through together illustrating using CSS and element queries uh, exactly what can happen and how the browser could think about this in a way that's not problematic. Um, so let's get started. So the idea of a style referencing itself already exists in CSS. I'm going to write a couple styles here that illustrate this, but these aren't the only ways that this can happen. There's a ton of ways that self-reference can cause problems when you're writing CSS. So here I have a div. I'm going to add a style for that div that gives it some width, some height, and a background so we can see it. I'm also going to set a transition so we can see it animate when it changes. So all we have to do for self-reference is create a hover rule. So this is a pseudo class that applies only when our mouse is hovering. So you can see when it applies, I'm going to make that red. Now, if we were to change the width to zero, and the height to zero, in the moment that we hover it, our div becomes red, zero, and zero. If we continue moving the mouse, you can tell that right now, we are no longer hovering the div. So the div comes back. It goes back to 100 by 100. It goes back to lime because we're not hovering it. So again, hover, not hover. The problem comes when we move the mouse inside the area where the conflict is happening. And the slower we move it, the faster the loop seems to go. At any point, if we stop moving it, the most recent calculated style is the one that sticks. So you can tell that right now I'm hovering, but it won't take the hover until the next time I move the mouse, continuing the loop. So this is self-reference. This right here is 100% valid CSS. It's 100% standard, but it doesn't do something that's very useful. So right now we've seen that although self-reference and circularity is possible with CSS, it isn't very practical. So here I'll do another one. If we set this to position relative, all that we have to do to make our circular style is to move it out of the way. So if I do top 100 and left 100, it's staying the same size, but when we hover it, it moves. So that's not very good. So if we were to try to take hover and prevent this from happening, if we were going to make it so that CSS could not have the circularity, we would say width is a property that you can't have inside of the hover pseudo class. Height would also be a problem. As you saw, top could be a problem, left could be a problem, right could be a problem, bottom could be a problem. And then if you think about other properties that could affect the height or width of an element, you get things like font size would be a no-no. If you don't specify the width, you change the font size, the element could change so that you're not hovering or you are hovering or who knows. There's also padding. That would be a no-no. Margin. The list just goes on. So if you were to take all of these properties and say the way to fix the problem with hover is to not ever allow any of these properties to affect an element in this pseudo class, you would end up with a very, very weak pseudo class for hover. Without being able to do any of these things, you would just have, uh, you know, like change the color, or change the background. And the whole reason that we need this hover pseudo class is so we can change things. So now with element queries or container queries, the problem is that instead of a pseudo class, we're writing responsive styles. And so with media queries, 
the viewport can't be changed by any of the styles inside of it, so this kind of circularity is just not possible with media queries. It is possible with container queries and element queries, but is that a problem? So let me demonstrate here what this can look like. I'm going to add eqcss here. So now if we write an element query, at element div, and let's say, and max width 300 px. So this rule is only going to apply when that div is less than 300 px. So any div that is less than 300 px, let's make the background red, and let's set the width to 500 px. So this is going to make it wide enough that this rule no longer applies. Now let's make a second rule that says um, when the div is at least 400 pixels wide, this rule here sets any div that matches that uh, background as lime, and we're going to say that the width is uh, 200 px. So now, as you can see, we have two different kind of conflicting illogical rules here. And the browser, just like with our hover example before, the browser is trying its best to solve this. So it goes from top to bottom and says, you know, apply 100 pixels height. It's done that. Position relative we don't even need anymore. Um, it hits this first one and it says, hey, is it at least 300 pixels wide? And because div is 100% width by default, it does not apply. So it gets down to here and says is it at least 400. So in this case, the, it is because there's at least 400 pixels. So it sets it to 200 and then this applies and it's done. Now, if we continue to trigger this EQCSS plugin, if we, it's like moving the mouse over the hover thing. Right now it's done. There's no looping. The browser didn't get stuck in an infinite loop and explode and blow up. It just applied the illogical styles and we're left with an impractical result. But there's no problem here. So as I change the width, you can tell that there's some conflict going. If I click or do other elements, or other events on the page rather, you can see that it's trying to recalculate these styles, but we don't have the same looping problem that a lot of people foresee. What a lot of people picture when they think about circularity is they picture something like this. They picture just this thing getting stuck in this infinite loop, bouncing back and forth, never being able to resolve or find a style. And as you can see, uh, using JavaScript, we can keep it animating as fast as we can make it, but there's really nothing to be gained by that. So is there a problem with circularity and element queries and container queries? I don't think so. I think that you can process it just like with the CSS, Self-reference is possible. It's not practical. I think it should be part of the language. I think it should be legal or valid. But I don't foresee a lot of use coming out of it. But just like with Hover, if we try to limit element queries or limit container queries to say, oh, uh, nothing inside of this rule should be able to affect the validity of the rule applying to it. Just like with Hover, remember how I started listing all those properties here? we're going to quickly run into that problem where you remove all of the power and what you're left with is it doesn't solve the original problem. So I do not believe that we should attempt to create or implement container queries or element queries in a way where circularity is not possible. I think that that would defeat the purpose for having the element queries in the first place. Now, just like the hover examples, there's not a lot of cases where this valid code would be very useful. And so you wouldn't end up writing it or building it into any layouts because it's not something that's very predictable or that you can really work with. And so for that reason, I've been using the syntax for a while. And apart from building demos like this to illustrate circularity, you just never run into it by accident. It might happen once or twice when you're thinking illogically and you write something that can be correctly interpreted and it doesn't do anything very useful. But I think that 
allowing people to write non-useful styles is kind of a side effect of a language where you can write very useful styles. And so I don't think that the scope or power should be limited. I think that it's not really a problem. And uh, to try to prevent it from being a problem would create a lot more problems. So that's kind of where I stand on it. Not really an issue once you start using them, once you start building layouts with them, and once you realize that CSS is already, you know, this is not something new or unique. CSS already kind of has this problem, but it's not stopping people from building layouts today. If we make CSS more powerful, we'll be able to build better layouts, but it won't stop people from building those layouts if they can write illogical styles.